How do you design a thumbnail or cover image that will catch somebody's eye and get them to click? Hi, I'm Matthew Encina. If you don't know me, I've been a creative professional for over 15 years working in design, advertising, and creating content. In this video, I'll be sharing my process from beginning to end for how I designed this thumbnail using my printer, a few tools, Photoshop, and my camera. Recently, I released a video on our other channel, The Future. As with any YouTube video, the title and thumbnail are everything. It's your first impression of the content and it gives your audience an idea of what the video will be about, which leads me to my goal for designing any thumbnail. It has to convey the idea of the video in an interesting way that will get people to click through and watch it. Let's start by talking about the concept. The video I'm making a thumbnail for is about our unreasonably high expectations of ourselves and what it does to our creativity. In it, I share my personal battle with my own high expectations, which created an unrealistic perception in my mind about who I should be versus who I want to be. I wanted to capture this idea and feeling somehow in the design of the thumbnail. Since the video is so personal to my experience, I also wanted to add some kind of personal touch to it. The first version of the thumbnail, I created this image. To make it stand out, I took a practical analog approach using cutout papers and crude drawings to give it a handmade feel. I wanted it to look very different from the normally bright and saturated thumbnails that you would normally see on YouTube. You can see the idea here was to take the normal version of you, illustrated by the figure in the center, juxtaposed against a larger white silhouette, which represents the higher expectation of you. I released the video using this thumbnail and it performed okay. It had a 2.5% click-through rate on YouTube, which is fairly average on our channel. I wasn't satisfied with that result, so I wanted to see if I could design a different thumbnail that would improve that click-through rate. The second version of the thumbnail, I created this. Still the same concept, except using a playful illustration style to convey it. This time I removed all of the typography and used a color palette that I generated using Greg Gunn's techniques from the Color for Creatives course, which I highly recommend if you haven't taken it yet. So on the second day of the video being out, I changed the video thumbnail to this to see if it would improve the click-through rate. To my surprise, it performed exactly the same. So over the weekend, being isolated at home, I got inspired to try for a third attempt at designing this thumbnail. This time, I wanted to explore the idea of layers, literal layers on top of my face. I started by sketching this idea in my sketchbook and I thought I'd play with handwritten typography and print it on my face. I wanted to convey the idea that there's the real me buried underneath all of the expectations of me. And I would do this by juxtaposing a color image behind a set of grayscale images. To show this, I started by printing out a full color version of my face to represent the real me as a base as well as a few layers of black and white variants of my portrait to place on top of it. For the black and white portraits, I wanted to play up the idea that they didn't represent the real me. To do that, I treated these portraits like they were halftone newsprints, which look like manufactured versions of me. To give that halftone look, I started by converting my photos to grayscale first, and then I adjusted the value so that the contrast would feel a little bit more flat. This way, the highest point of contrast would be on the full color portrait underneath, and the focus would be on my eyes. Then I converted the images to bitmaps using these settings. You can insert and play around with different values here to change the size and spacing of the halftone dots that will be created. I exported a few variations of these settings and then printed them out to play with. Once I had a few printed portraits, I busted out my cutting mat, box cutter, a Sharpie pen, and then I went to town. I first started with creating an interpretation of my original sketch, crudely cutting out a window over my eyes to roll back and reveal the real me underneath. 
Then I started writing all over my face to project all of the expectations that were being placed on me. When I saw the result, I felt it looked a little too messy visually, and I wouldn't be able to read this as a small thumbnail image. So I tried other versions of this execution, simplifying it down with no typography. Then I explored a version that utilized a post-it note on top of my face to capture those expectations. Then I played with combining two different portraits, one smiling, one serious, to draw more exaggeration between the two states. To create some depth between the layers, I used some dice that I had lying around and used them as spacers in between the pieces of paper. This created some nice shadows between the sheets. By the end of my initial explorations, I realized I had a big pile of cut up portraits that I intended to throw away. But at that point, I got the idea to stack up all the layers on top of each other to see what the result might look like. I'm glad I did because that probably led to my most interesting results. I took photos of each setup at different stages so I'd have options to choose from for my thumbnail. Of all the photos, the one that worked the best in the 16 by 9 format for YouTube was this one. A little tip here, if you're making thumbnails for YouTube, I recommend scaling your image way down to make sure it still works. Sometimes as designers, we obsess over details that don't really matter because no one will ever really see them. For this particular thumbnail, I felt that even at the small size, you could read the image, it was still engaging to look at, and it might pique your curiosity if you're scrolling through YouTube. And that should always be your goal for designing YouTube thumbnails, to make somebody stop from scrolling and then click on your video and you keep them there with your high value content. Perfect. Because if you can't get your audience to click, they'll never see your video. Now I was ready to test this third design of my thumbnail. On the third day the video was out, I swapped the thumbnail to this and here were the results. The click-through rate nearly doubled from 2.5% with my original design up to 4.5% with the new design. This means that the video is now getting more views, YouTube is recommending it more in its algorithm, and my message will reach more people. And that's why it's important to design good thumbnails or covers for your projects so that people will click through. Now that we've reached the end, let me quickly recap my process. First, it was to identify my goal. Second, I came up with a concept and sketched it out. Third, I designed several executions of the idea. And the fourth step, I tested each variation to see which one would perform best. I hope you enjoyed this process video. I encourage you to try new things, explore new mediums outside of the digital ones, because analog is just so much fun. If you want to learn more from me, I'm considering making a course to help you learn conceptual thinking and idea generation, which I believe is the foundation of good communication design. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in. In the meantime, if you want to support us, check out all of our courses at thefuture.com. Every purchase there helps fund the content we make here. That's it for me. I'll see you all in the future.